Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Zach drive and review. All right, so yeah, again with like films, I mentioned this in my last video, I kind of said that films where I'm just like, it's really late at night and I'm, I'm driving home and I get to focus on the road and talk about a film that I just saw, it will be easier this way. So that way on Sundays when I start to record the videos of movies and stuff that I really want to make a video on and talk about, uh, it'll just be easier to get through with. So hence why I'm reviewing this film uh, now. I just saw Saturday Nights starring a fucking shitload of people. Um, what is his name? The guy from The Failments. Is like Gabriel Bell and then uh, Cooper Hoffman, Rachel Sennett, Dan, I was going to say Dan Aykroyd, uh, <laughs> Dylan O'Brien as Dan Aykroyd, Corey Michael Smith, Willem Dafoe, J.K. Simmons, and a bunch of other fucking people. Um, and I thought this was such a blast. <laughs> I kind of like saw the trailers for this film. I've seen it multiple times, the trailers, and I've just kind of always been in the mindset of like, that looks like it'll be a fun time and I'll forget about it pretty quickly after um, kind of film. But I don't know, maybe I was just in the right mood. I did see this extremely late at night. The showtime I went to was at like, what do you call it? I think it was at 10.50 and now I'm getting out and it's like 1 a.m. in the morning. So the way to see this truly would be on a Saturday night. If your theater has like, a nine third a nine like what do you call it no actually like a, a nine forty five showing so right when the show is supposed to hit in the movie at eleven thirty you can be like oh shit it's eleven thirty right when this thing started because the whole point of this movie is it's the first Saturday night ever trying to be recorded. Lord Michaels is stressing the fuck out, running around, making sure everything is up to task because in exactly 90 minutes, they have to go live with the first ever Saturday night, which is a show that no one really knows what's going on. They know it's like skits, variety show, what is about to click in on Saturday night. On this show, no one knows, but everyone believes it is destined to fail. The actors are fighting. I um, mean, you got fucking Chevy Chase in there. Obviously, there's going to be some anger. John Belushi, there's going to be some anger. <laughs> and cocaine, lots of cocaine. Um, but that is just kind of the fun of it. It's this ensemble piece jumping between different abilities, the writers that are struggling, the actors not getting along, the set fucking falling apart, the people who are working on the set not work, working together, uh, to put Brick's place down, uh, the singers not knowing when they're coming on to perform, Billy Crystal being like, I need four minutes for my set. And they're like, you're giving you two. Too bad you can't fit it in. Oh, well, I guess we, we can't do that. It is just constantly running around, stressful, kind of, it's a real time stressful film that they have to get something done before it's there. And that's what like, besides like maybe like two scenes that are like pretty calm. And I would say that one of them is at a bar and the other one is between Rachel Sennett and Gabrielle Abel, um, Lauren Michaels and his uh, once wife. Um, I'm forgetting your name. It's like, uh, what do you call it? Rosie Michaels, I think would have been her name. Um, I thought they were really uh, good in the film. I thought everyone gave a great performance. Um, I only am aware of a few people, which are like Garrett Morris, uh, Dan Aykroyd, Chevy Chase, Lorne Michaels. So I don't like know everyone and their personalities that they're 100% trying to be. But I can say at least like Corey Michael Smith as fucking Chevy Chase. And I would say even Dylan O'Brien is doing a pretty fucking great Dan Aykroyd. I would say those two are, like, really up to fucking task. I can't really say how Lauren Michaels acts. I only know Lauren Michaels now with the age he is now. I've only seen, like, photos of him in the past five years. So I don't know young Lauren Michaels or anything like that. And I, I think, like, Lauren Morris does find it as, uh, as Garrett. But um, nothing, like, incredible of a performance. But uh, overall, I, I just really had a fun time. I went into this like expecting again to think it was just going to be, oh, that was fun. I'm um, glad I can forget about it. Like just a pretty good film, but I don't know. I thought Jason Reitman's direction was actually pretty great. It was constantly engaging the way it was done. I think it was very well edited. Love the score, like the constant, like stressful jazzy beats and drums just kicking in. It really feels like you're watching like a seventies night show about to ensue like the band playing some background noise for the audience while they get ready it's what it feels like the entire time and it just builds and fucking builds the entire time um couple like little issues here and there i wouldn't say it's like the best comedy ever it's i feel like it's trying to be a mixture of like a tension filled comedy with a little bit of drama the drama doesn't really hit but the comedy is really funny whenever it's like 
I would especially say the people playing the actors bickering, like Chevy Chase, John Belushi, um, and uh, Dan Aykroyd. Like when it's just everyone bickering together, or this one. There's this one like little sequence of Andrew Barth Feldman, who you guys might know from uh, No Hard Feelings that came out last year. Um, he was fucking hilarious in that. I was glad to see him in this as like one of the assistants on set. Uh, he ends up like taking a puff <laughs> uh, from these writers. Uh, uh, from the the writers, he takes a puff from this fucking blunt, and the guy just goes fucking crazy. And that sequence is really funny. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of like really fun sequences, but it all meshes together with an actual narrative. You feel John Belushi's struggle to be like, what am I doing? Why would I ever join this script? You feel George Carlin's extreme anger and stress of just like, what the fuck is this shit? Because he can't be offensive. Uh, you can feel the writers being cut down by the pen lady who has to make sure everything's appropriate before it goes on air and them just being a completely against her. Uh, you feel Lord Michael's stress just going around and fucking realizing that everything is going wrong, but he really wants to make this show work. Um, and now it's kind of iconic. I don't know. I think it builds it up in such a hype way that it is almost like not egotistical, but it's just like, no, this is the revolutionary show. And it's like, I wonder if it was really this aggressively like stressful as it was in this film or if it was just you know built up for film but regardless I found it to be very entertaining and definitely well made I think that that's enough to carry this film a long ways and I think that a lot of people um are gonna feel that way about it I really hope people go check this out I hope it doesn't like bomb or anything but yeah very good film I very much enjoyed it um Seems like most people I see online are, are seeming to enjoy it. I think it got, like, not to say mixed reviews, but, like, good reviews. It seems like it's getting good reviews, but I thought it was fucking great. Like, again, much better than I expected. This is one that I could find really rewatchable uh, on a certain time. I think, um, I haven't ever seen the first episode of SNL. I've seen clips of SNL, like, old SNL from, like, the late 70s. And this is 1975, so I don't think I've seen anything from, like, first two or three seasons, probably, of SNL, but I definitely have seen bits from it, and I, I think I could say that it felt pretty accurate and to the time. A lot of the comedy in Saturday Night at the time, like, a lot of the gags, when they actually would show what the skits were about from back then, it's like, this is so fucking dated, but it's, like, it's cute humor. Like, you kind of get it. It's very, very simple humor, but at the time, I guess it's, like, supposed to be the revolutionary aggressive comedy for TV that no one expects, and, and that's kind of the fun of it. Um, yeah, that's about all I have to say about Saturday Night. I think, very fun time. The, the friend who I went to see it with, I don't think he, he basically knew no one but Chevy Chase, so, and even he had a really good time, so I do think that there's an ability to enjoy the movie, but I do think that the people who are going to love this the most are going to be adults and fans of SNL from every year and every decade, and especially if you know the skits from back then and you know these people who are in the film very, very well, I think that's really going to be the, 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 the key, the clicker, the thing that's going to get everyone to be like, this is it right here. This is the shit that I'm talking about. Um, and I think that's exciting. I'm glad that people will get to hopefully get that out of this uh, movie. Very entertaining. I'm curious. I've heard the Oscar buzz around this one. I don't necessarily know if it's an Oscar type movie. It could get in there. And there's a few parts where I'm like, I could see this being in for like screenplay and editing and maybe score. Um, is that enough on the average to build this up to a best picture nom? I'm not sure. I think it's in the key. Like it's not top eight best picture nominees. I feel like there's about seven nominees that, of movies that seem locked. And then there's like eight movies that are juggling for those bottom three spots. And I think Saturday Night is one of those movies that could get in there. But I, at the moment, I don't necessarily think it will. But we'll have to see how award season builds because I think it could be interesting um but again I think without a strong actor at the helm and a stronger narrative overall because you all know where this goes it's gonna fucking air like obviously it's going to air we know Saturday Night Live has been on for like 50 goddamn years um it should not come off as shocking <laughs> that it's not here so um but yeah I found it very entertaining I don't really have much else to say Hopefully tomorrow, it's my off day at work because it's Columbus Day. I might, I really want to go see The Apprentice. Really want to go see A Different Man. Uh, I still need to see Superman, the Christopher Reeve documentary. White Bird, uh, just a bunch of stuff to catch up on. So maybe I can go see like two or three movies and knock some of those out. That would be pretty fun. Um, but I was happy to see Saturday Night. Uh, it sucks that I saw it on a Sunday night. It would be perfectly accurate if I saw this on a Saturday night. But 
it's whatever. Can't really complain. Still had an amazing time. I'm gonna go, man. We'll go like an eight and a half out of 10. I thought this was fucking great. Um, I logged it as a four and a half out of five on Letterbox. I mean, it could go up or down. I am riding a very hype high right now and I'm reviewing this like right off the bat, but uh, give me time to sit with it because I do think I, I would go see this again. I might go with my dad. I think he would very much enjoy this film. I definitely know that he's seen some of the skits that are in here because um, when the trailer came out, he was pointing out like the Bumblebee stuff of John Belushi in the bee outfit. I was like, okay, so my dad clearly knows probably this even episode in its entirety, so we'll see. Um, and I think that's all I have to say. Live from my car, it's Monday morning. Tech on a technicality. All right, bye, everyone.